people are always so afraid to meet you. I know. And you're just so stinking sweet. <laughs> because what people don't realize is that, like all of us, there are many dimensions. So there's Tabitha that you see on TV that is me and work me. And if you ask some of my staff, they say I'm much nicer to the salons I take over <laughs> than sometimes I am to them. But then there's Tabitha that's sitting here hanging out and chatting with you. Well, your book is very revealing. It's honest. I mean, you had quite a childhood. I did. I mean, what was that like growing up around? Your parents ran strip clubs. <laughs> so what's that like? To me, it was normal. You know, to me, honestly, to me, it was normal because I knew nothing else. So it was normal. I realized that my friends at school didn't grow up that way. Their parents weren't running, you know, strip clubs with drag queens and things like that. But to me, it was a totally normal childhood. And it, honestly, I feel like it was the best education in the world. I'm really so grateful for it. It, it taught me so much about being honest and being authentic and being really accepting of people and taking people for who they are. And I think you're, that's a big part of what you do, who you are, and that background really preps you for working in a salon, obviously. Yeah, it really, yeah. It really does. And it, was, it really was. It was just such a great thing to, to see people that, you know, were men that were becoming women, but really just believed in themselves through all the adversity, through all the, you know, BS that everyone else put on them. They really you know, stood tall with their head high. And that was such an amazing thing to see at a young age. And it really did help me have confidence with, yes, you know what? I am ballsy and I do say things that other people won't say. And I you do get do. called the B word and all of those things. But I'm also confident enough within myself to realize I'm not mean. I'm not doing it to be mean. I'm doing it to try and help these people. It's because you're real. Okay, so I watched you on the very first season of Sheer Genius. And like a million years ago. Didn't I it? know. I mean, I watch, <laughs> if there's a show on Bravo, it could be Real Housewives of Boise. I'm watching it. <laughs> but so I watched you on Sheer Genius. And did you ever think for a minute that winning that, and then all of a sudden. I you, didn't win. Uh, wait, did you come in second place? No. I got kicked off. I think I think there were eight episodes and I got kicked off episode six. Why do it's okay? So you you got like close to the end. I got close to the end, but you should have won. I did win. I kind of did win. I mean, let's face I, it. I kind of right. I because I you know did win. it's like the American Idol runners up, like Jennifer Hudson, right? exactly. So it worked out for you. I mean, did you ever think for a minute how did that come from that show? When does Andy Cohen come to you and say, "All right, Tabitha"? He did actually. Oh my god! So how did that go? I got this phone call when Sheer Genius was all said and done and over and I got a phone call and it was actually from Andy Cohen. And Andy said, could you come into Manhattan and sit down and meet with us and have lunch? And I was like, sure. And I honestly thought that I was gonna get there. They were gonna rip up my contract and say, you know, thank you so much, it was great. We had a really good time, it was lovely to meet you, bye bye. And I got to Andy's office and sat down and all these other people came in and they asked me if I was interested in doing my own show. Oh my God, so how did that feel? What, what were you thinking when they said that to you? Well, I said yes in a heartbeat. We it like, it yes. was like a New York minute that yeah. I was like, uh-huh. Um, it was great. I mean, it, it, was really, it was really just a very easy conversation. There was, no, there was no format to the show. They just said, are you interested? We're interested you know, go forth and talk to the production company, come up with what you're comfortable with. Did they give you the idea no. for it? So it wasn't like that show with Jonathan Blowout? No, no, no. They they really just talked about would I be comfortable? Did I have any idea what I would like to do? I knew that I'm not interesting enough to follow me around. Meanwhile, that show, how many times could he cry? Do you yeah. know him personally? I have met him, yes. And your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll just leave it at that. All right, we have some great questions from the audience. Um, uh, Leanne wants to know how you keep yourself from totally losing it or not hitting people when you go to these takeovers. <laughs> how do you do that? Uh, what? Well, come on, you've seen me walk out. I mean, I lose it. I lose it all the time, Leah. Please. Um, <laughs> I'm not allowed to hit people, so that <laughs> that stops me from hitting anyone because I'm not allowed to do that. But you see me lose it. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, you see me lose it. You see me walk out. You see me. You know, part of the reason why I swear is honestly just because I'm so frustrated. Right. That to me, it's like an exclamation point. It's you're not listening to me, and then as soon as I say the f word, it kind of snaps people into attention a little bit, and it's but it's that's, just frustration. That's which what is brings, why I do it. That's what br- br- makes it so awesome. Um, this is an interesting hair question because I, I want to ask this too. If you, this if the stylist owns the salon, mm-hmm. do you tip them? Uh, such a debatable question. It really is. I believe in offering. So I believe in a in a client saying, you know, here's the tip and giving it to the owner or giving it to the receptionist. And the receptionist will know the owner does not accept tips or the stylist will say, I, I do not accept tips. Here's the misconception that people have from a business owner's point of view. They think that the owners are rolling in money, so they're not going to tip them. When in actuality, even if you own the business, often you're just paying yourself through your tips because you're paying all the other bills, especially if your salon is not doing really well, or you're just paying yourself a paycheck just like every other stylist in there. Right, right. So you would say just try and ask. Yeah, I mean, I would try. Some some owners will say, you know, no, I don't accept tips. But for a lot of owners out there and small business people, if they're struggling and they're, they're really not rolling in money, so they're living off their tips just like some of the other stylists in the salon, sometimes it, it actually means more to them than some of the stylists because they're not taking a paycheck. Right, right, right. So that's a fair question then. Um, has anybody retaliated after a Tabitha salon takeover? As far as like, has it afterwards? That's what Liz Shepard wants to know. Like a disgruntled ex employee. No, they really haven't. I mean, people are sometimes not happy with me when I leave. And it's really interesting because I can get. I, I stay in contact with a lot of the salon owners and oh, a lot of the you people do. through Facebook and Twitter and going to hair shows. I run mm-hmm. into them and things mm-hmm. like that. And sometimes when I leave, there are people that obviously are not happy with me. And then I will get emails from them mm-hmm. when the dust settles and they'll be like, thank you. Actually, it happened mm. uh, this season, the salon in Houston. Mm-hmm. And I recommended my recommendation was what, that one of the booth renters get fired because she was so behind in her rent. Mm-hmm. She wasn't paying it. The owners were in a hole and she owed, it was thousands of dollars mm-hmm. that she owed. Mm-hmm. And I recommended for her to go. And she actually sent me an email and said, thank you. It was the best thing that ever could have happened to me. You changed my life. It changed my situation. I needed structure. I needed a salon that held me accountable, that I got paid a commission. And you totally turned me around. So it's one of those cases where, you know, you got fired. You were firing someone. It was the best thing that yeah. ever happened to him. Okay, let's talk about The Real Housewives for a minute. When you <laughs> were on and you talked about Adrian Maloof's extensions, you were not a fan of those. I, look, I, I no, I don't love those little gold <laughs> things in her hair. I'm just saying. I mean, I, I love her. I do. I love her. I love The Housewives of Beverly Hills. I mean, come on, really? <laughs> Really? Is that your favorite one? Oh, without a doubt. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I could just sit there and go, love, love. Now, did she ever get back to you and say, Tabitha, what's the deal? No, she okay. didn't. She didn't. But, you know, the flip side of that is Adrian is fun and, you know, she, she is. She's fun and she's quirky and she's experimental and all of those kind of things. I just am not a fan of it because I look at her and just think, She's so fabulous that those gold things in her hair, maybe if you were 20, yeah, okay, I get it. But eh, not so much. I, I think so too. I love how you said that.